Hi, welcome to the new CrossFit Sugar. I'm Charlie Atkins, and I'm gonna show you all of my favorite bodyweight core exercises in this 20 minute workout. This session is sponsored by Under Armour. You don't need any equipment for this workout, so let's go ahead and get started with our warm up. All right, let's come down onto the mat. We're gonna start with adductor rocks. So you're just gonna reach one leg out to the side, toe pulls towards the shin, a nice flat back, and you're just pressing your hips forward and backwards. This is a great way to warm up the muscles of the inner thigh, but I don't want your shoe on the mat. I want the bottom of your foot lifted up so that you have a nice active ankle. Toes are pulling towards the shin. Go ahead and give me three more rocks on this side, and we'll do the exact same thing on the opposite leg. Straight line from the head all the way to the tailbone. Pressing the hips forward and backwards. If you want a little bit more out of the stretch, all you have to do is dig the inside of your foot down into the mat. And you're gonna feel the entire inner thigh start to light up in the best way possible. Good. Coming into the next exercise, we're gonna be doing a down dog with a leg lift. So bend the knees, push the tailbone to the sky, straight line from the head to the tailbone. And then all you're gonna do is lift one heel up and then the other. If you have tight hamstrings, you can always keep the knees slightly bent, but you do want a straight line from your head all the way to your tailbone. Think about sliding into home plate, really pressing your hands into the mat. We've got about 15 seconds left here. Just like in our other exercises, I want you to keep an active angle, toe pulls towards the shin, heel lifts up towards the sky. As your heel lifts up, you want a straight line from your head all the way to that lifted heel. You need one more on each leg. And then we're gonna go ahead and come down onto the mat. We're gonna come into our first core set. So starting with one of my favorite ab exercises, a dead bug. Lying here down on your back, you're going to plug your elbow to your thigh or your hand to your knee, whichever makes more sense for you. And then all I want you to do is inhale, reach. Exhale, bring everything back to center. Good. Really thinking about those lines, straight line from my fingertip all the way to that extended heel. And then I'm really plugging my elbow and my knee together or my hand and my knee, whichever makes more sense for you. Now, if lifting your head up is too challenging, you can always let your head rest on the mat. But if you are up for the challenge, try to keep your shoulder blades off the mat. Good. Go ahead and take a quick breath. We're gonna switch sides, so same thing. You can either plug elbow and knee together or hand and knee, whichever makes more sense. If you want a little bit more of a challenge, lift the shoulder blades off the mat. Inhale, reach, keeping that active ankle, toe pulls towards the shin. Using the exhale to bring everything back to center. If you do start to feel your neck tense up, I would rather you leave your head on the mat. So whichever feels the most supported, you wanna have a nice controlled core exercise. Inhale, reach, exhale, bring everything back to center. Really trying to keep your lower back pressed into the mat. Good. From there, we're gonna flip over onto our elbows. We're gonna be doing a plank reach. So grab opposite elbows, place them down on the mat. Hands come down on the mat, step your feet back. And then all I want you to do is reach out in front of you without rotating the body. So the goal is to keep hips and shoulders square towards the mat as you reach out. Good job. Let's see if you can get about two or three more on each arm. Again, trying not to let your body rotate. And then we're gonna come back to those dead bugs. So lying on your back, your choice, hand or elbow onto your thigh or your knee, whichever makes more sense. And then here we go, inhale, reach. Exhale, everything back to center. If you're doing these dead bugs correctly, your core should be totally on fire. Inhale, reach, use the full exhale. So I want you to blow the air out like you're blowing out a birthday candle. Good job. We got about 10 seconds left on this side. Remember, you don't need to do fast reps. I want you to do controlled reps. If that means you have to be a little bit slower, I'm okay with that. Take a quick recovery, and then we're gonna switch over to the opposite side, same thing, either elbow or hand, your choice. And then here we go, inhale, reach. Exhale, bring everything back in. If you do start to feel your neck tensing up, just leave the head down on the mat. And you can always use your hand pressing into your thigh. But you wanna maintain as much tension as possible between those two. 
good. Oh wow, I'm really starting to feel the core. Try not to let your lower back leave the mat. Oof, good. See if you can give me two or three more reps. Last one for me right here. And then we're gonna flip over for that plank reach. So I always start my planks by grabbing opposite elbows. That just sets me up for a nice successful plank position. In my plank position, straight line from my head to my heels, and then reaching out in front of me without letting the rest of my body rotate. So as you extend out, really press into that forearm. That's pressing down into the mat. We got about 10 seconds right here. Finish nice and strong with me. Whew. Don't let the booty come up into the air. Straight line from the head all the way to the heels. One more reach on each side. And then we're gonna go ahead and come on up to standing for our next set of exercises. So we're gonna be doing squats, curtsy lunges, as well as another plank variation. This is just to get more muscles involved, more body parts moving. Let's go ahead and get started with our squat kick. So you're just gonna come down into your basic bodyweight squat, and then you're gonna kick the heel out in front of you. Now the theme of a lot of my workouts is making sure that we have a flexed foot, meaning the toe pulls towards the shin. So as you're kicking out in front of you, I don't want you to point the toe, I want you to flex the foot, driving through the heel like you're trying to kick down the door. Keep the heart and the chest up. Let your breath help you out. And again, you are balancing on one leg as you kick out in front of you. Good. See if we can do two more squats, two more quick kicks, one on each leg, and then we're gonna go ahead and come into a curtsy lunge. So in this curtsy lunge, we're just gonna stick with the right side, one foot steps behind you, back knee kisses the ground, tap the foot, and then if you are holding onto a basketball or a medicine ball, you're gonna spill that ball over the knee. Good. Really pushing yourself up to standing through that front leg, and then holding onto that ball, just spilling it over the knee. Now one thing I want you to do, make sure that you're doing is tap the foot in between the curtsy lunge and the knee drive. The reason why is you wanna reset the hips and then use the core to bring that leg up as opposed to using momentum. Let's go ahead and switch sides, same thing. Back knee kisses the mat, spilling something over that opposite knee or the same knee. Tapping the foot in between holding onto your ball, or another way that you can think of it is if you had a bucket of water and you're just spilling that bucket of water over your knee. In a curtsy lunge or a curtsy squat, you wanna make sure that the shoulders, shoulders and the head are in line with the hips. This is a great way to hit all of the muscle groups in the entire body. Go ahead and give me one more, and then we're gonna come down onto the mat for a plank walk. So use that same trick I taught you, grab opposite elbows, place them down on the mat. You're gonna start in your elbow plank position, replace elbow with hand, the hand with elbow, and then alternate. Now what I see a lot in these plank walks, also known as commandos, also known as up, up, down, down, is people really sway their hips. Keep your hips stable the entire time. It's almost like you're an elevator, lowering yourself down, lifting yourself up. Let's go ahead and come back up to standing for those squat kicks. So we're trying to move quick here, not staying too long in one exercise. That way we can get the biggest bang for our sweaty butt as we do this workout. Don't forget to kick through the heel, not the toe. So you're kicking down a door. Heart and chest stay up. In your squat, the knees drive away from each other, not caving in. You do not want the knees to cave in. Ooh. Let's do two more squats, two more kicks, and then we're gonna come into those curtsy lunges. Here we go. Step one foot behind you, back knee kisses the mat, tap, spilling it over the knee. Good. Oh. Now something with curtsy lunges is the knee is just barely peeking out in front of, or behind the heel, I should say. So you don't wanna step too far back. You don't want too much rotation of the body. You just wanna step behind you. Drive up to standing through that front leg. Tap. Take your ball or your bucket and spill it over the knee. Good, go and give me two more on this side. And then we'll switch over to the opposite leg. 
Whenever you're ready, go ahead and fire it up. Back knee kisses the ground. I say kisses because you want it to be a super light tap and you want the front leg to do all of the work. So you want to think of the back leg like a kickstand. In order for you to get the biggest bang for a curtsy lunge, you want the front leg to do a majority of the work. So back leg is just a kickstand. Don't forget to tap in between. Tap, spilling over the knee. Good. Heart and chest stay up. Whew. This is like a little cardio set. Oh, lost my balance a little. Let's do one more together. Spilling over the knee. Come into those plank walks. Grab opposite elbows. Come down onto the mat. Set yourself up for success. Not rocking the body. Lowering down. Lifting up. So we're placing elbow with hand, hand with elbow. Halfway through, if you can remember, we are moving quick. Halfway through, if you can remember, switch your lead arm. Think of your body like an elevator going down one level to the next. You've got less than 10 seconds. Keep going. Almost there. Give me one more. And then let's go ahead and come on up to standing for our next round of exercise. So we are gonna do a little bit more cardio. We're gonna be moving our body a little bit more. We're just gonna be doing a skip. Now, if you have neighbors that don't want you to skip, you can march in place. Or if you don't know how to get into a skip, you can start by marching in place, and then you can add a little bit of a hop. Now, if you're already skipping and you're already getting bored, you can start to move laterally, side to side. And remember, this whole workout is about core, so I want you to think about the core staying nice and strong, nice and controlled, as you move through your skips. Good, about 10 seconds left. Keep going, keep the heart up. Don't let yourself crash forward. And three, two, good. Now from here, let's come down onto the mat. We're gonna be doing a hip raise, but we're gonna be alternating. So I want you to do three and three. One knee comes up, you're gonna do three single leg hip raises, and then you're just gonna switch legs. Just like in all of our other exercises, no pointed toes, only flex feet. So toes pull towards the shin, driving through that foot that's down on the mat to get your hips up. <sighs> Thinking about how the core stays involved in this exercise since we are doing a core workout. <sighs> Good. See if you can give me three more. Nice. Now from here, we're gonna be doing a triple-triple. So. You're gonna bring the feet up. Again, toes pull towards the shin. All it is is three classic crunches. Lifting the heart up towards the sky, hands come down. And then you're gonna do three reverse crunches. Now, if reverse crunches don't feel comfortable to you, here's an alternative. You can do three crunches, followed by four heel drops. So both the reverse crunch and a heel drop are gonna target the lower abs. So we're getting the top abs, if you will, for this classic crunch. And then we're getting the bottom abs, if you will, for the reverse crunch. Two, three. You can either do the heel drop or you can do that reverse crunch. Good. Now from there, go ahead and flip over with me into push-up plank position or high plank position. Shoulders are over the wrist. In your high plank position, you're just gonna bring knee, bring knee towards armpit and you're gonna switch sides. Just like in all of our plank exercises that we've done, plank reach, plank walk, you do not want the body to rotate. So shoulders and hips stay square, square towards the mat as you're alternating feet. Good. Three. Give me one more on each leg, and then go ahead and come on up to salmon, and we're gonna head right back to those skips. So if you have neighbors that don't want you skipping, you can always march. If you feel comfortable adding a little bit of movement, you can turn it into a skip. If you're looking for a little bit more movement than a skip, go ahead and move lateral with me, side to side. Using your breath, keeping the heart and the chest up, and just moving from left to right, right to left. You've got about 10 seconds left here. The goal is to bring the heart rate up. Good. And don't forget, we're gonna be coming down to the mat at first for our alternating single leg hip raises. So lying on your back, plug the elbows into the mat, lift one leg up, it's three on one side before alternating legs. 
Keeping an active angle, toe pulls towards the shin. Try pulling your knee a little bit closer towards your chest. And then alternating sides. Good, you've got about 15 seconds left here. Don't rush it. I'd rather you have smart, controlled reps than trying to kind of speed through this workout. Good, from here, let's head into that triple triple. I gave you two options. Starts with three classic crunches, lifting the heart up to the sky, followed by three reverse crunches. Or I'll show you the, alt, the option, three classic crunches, followed by four, just to balance it out, heel drops. Whichever makes more sense for you. Heart lifts to the sky for your classic crunches. The ankles are always active and you're either doing a reverse crunch, just getting the tailbone off the mat, or you're doing that heel drop. <sighs> Trying to keep your lower back pressed into the mat. You've got about five seconds left, finishing nice and strong. Good, and then from there, we're gonna head into those plank spiders. So high plank position, shoulders are over the wrist, straight line from the head all the way to that heel, not rotating the body, bringing the knee up and over the fire hydrant, and switching sides. Try gripping the ground with the fingertips. I like to call it tenting the fingertips. And you've got about 10 seconds left. Don't let your booty go up in the air. You wanna keep that straight line from the head all the way down to the hips. Heels really pushing yourself away from the mat. And then give me one more on each side. And then we're gonna come into our final round of core exercises. Starting with another one of my favorites, we're gonna be doing a quarter get up. The knee that's up is the arm that's up. I'll say that again, the knee that's up is the arm that's up. The other limbs are extended. All you're going to do is use your core to roll you up onto your elbow, slowly lower right back down and come right back up. I do want your head kissing the mat in between reps, so I don't want you to stress out your neck by always trying to pull your chin up towards the sky. Let your head relax before you come right back up into another rep. Using this elbow as a kickstand, so as I roll myself up, I push into the elbow, spreading my chest, lower right back down, and repeat. You've got less than 10 seconds left on this side. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the opposite leg, or the opposite side, I should say. Good. Let's go ahead and switch. So the knee that's up is the arm that's up. Opposite limbs are extended. If it's helpful for you, you wanna think about keeping your leg at about a 45 degree angle from the body. And just like in all of our other exercises, keeping an active ankle, toe pulls towards the shin. Rolling up, pressing the elbow into the ground, and slowly coming right back down. Good. Reaching up towards the sky, looking up towards the sky the entire time. Good. See if you can give me about two to three more reps. I'm coming in for my final two, my last one. And then we're gonna go ahead and flip over and we're gonna be doing another plank. So grab opposite elbows, bring them down onto the mat, palms come down, step your feet back. Now keep in mind, the wider your feet are, the more stability you'll have. So if you really wanna challenge your core, try bringing the feet together, the heels together, and then push yourself away from the mat. Straight line from the head to the heels. If you wanna make this even more challenging, I want you to think about pulling the elbows towards the toes. You've got about 10 seconds left, trying to create a bubble in the middle of your mat by pulling your elbows towards your toes. Give me three, two, one. And then flipping right back over for our quarter get-ups. The knee that's up is the arm that's up. And then all you're doing is rolling up onto the elbow, reaching up towards the sky, letting your head kiss the mat in between reps. Good. I call this the get out of bed exercise because these are the muscles that roll you out of bed in the morning and get you started on the day. Give me one or two more reps, however many you have left in the tank on this side. And then let's go ahead and switch. Knee that's up is the arm that's up. Ankle stays active, toes pulling towards the shin, pressing the elbow into the mat to lift yourself up, letting the head kiss the ground in between reps. Use an exhale to bring you up and lower right back down. Really allowing the forearm or the elbow on the ground to press into the ground to try and spread the chest. Shooting for three more reps. That's three. This is two, one. And then coming into our final exercise, 
of the set, we're gonna be doing this plank hold. So grab opposite elbows, set yourself up, try zipping the heels together, straight line from the head all the way to the heels. Now in this final plank, I want you to think about blowing the, your birthday candle.